Well, hey, hello, everybody. How are you doing today? Uh, welcome to Good Stuff. My name is Kevin Billy, and uh, I'm very excited uh, to welcome our first women's basketball coach. Uh, and actually, she's a head of women's basketball coach at University of Missouri, Kansas City, also known as the Kansas City Rouge, J.C. Hoy. J.C., thanks for being on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. You didn't tell me I was the first women's. Yeah, that's a, that's a surprise, but uh, nonetheless. Well, hey, we, we are in Ohio, and, and you're not from around here, so maybe you know maybe some people don't know about you. So how about we just start off with a little bit of, of your journey and, and don't hold back and tell us how good of a player you were and, and so far how things have been going with coaching. Yeah, so uh, I'm a Kansas girl through and through. Um, I, I went to high school in a small town in Northwest Kansas called Hoxie, uh, where I played for my mother, Shelly Hoyt. Uh, she's a, a legend in the state of Kansas for, for high school girls basketball. Uh, so had a pretty good career playing for her, and uh, that, was, that was fun. Basketball is in my family um, through and through. So I played for my dad, I played for my mom, I've got three sisters who all played college basketball. So um, just come up, you know, from a basketball family, living in the gym type thing. Right. Uh, after that, I then went on to play college at Wichita State. So I was a shocker. And then uh, the coach who I played for at Wichita State, um, her name is Jane Albright. Incredible woman, um, invested so much in me and um, so much that she then gave me my first collegiate job at the University of Nevada in Reno. So my basketball career after I got done playing took me out there to the West Coast for a few years. And then after three really great years there, I got a job offer to go back home to Kansas and uh, coach as an assistant at Kansas State. So I spent three years there in the Big 12 and um, Honestly, was not looking really to become a head coach. I mean, I always knew I wanted to be, but um, I guess when you have really good years uh, as, as an assistant, then sometimes those those head jobs kind of open up for you. So um, here I am. I just finished my third season, and uh, we've had a, a great year. It was unfortunately cut short, like everybody else in the country. So we we did uh, qualify to play in the NCAA tournament, and for the first time in school history. And then, um, of course, you know, all of this COVID stuff hit, and so here we are. Right. Well, man, I, I can't imagine, first and foremost, what the battles were like in the backyard with your sisters um, to start with. But let, let's, let's, uh, let's talk about that just in general and growing up in that atmosphere and then, of course, playing for your mom. I mean, uh, were you a part of the 107-game winning streak in four state titles? Where did you fit with all that, too? Um, I'm a little bitter to say that I did not fit into that. Um, uh, my teams were always really good. We just, we, my senior year, we lost one game in the state semis. Um, and I think, I think I only, so I only got to play for three years because I had an ACL injury my freshman year. Um, but I think maybe we lost like three or four games in my three years. Mm -hmm. Um, so we were always, you know, really good. She's always had really good teams. Um, but of course she's known for that 107 game win streak. Yeah, I'm sure that's, that's a long time. So you've had some success obviously as a, as a player, you know, as a coach now being a part of programs, uh, and, and then of course with what you're doing down there, which we'll get to a little bit later. Is there something in particular that you attribute that success to? Well, I, I mean, I've got, just got to talk about my mom again. Um, so, so growing up, we always kind of moved around. Um, you know, my, my parents were teachers and coaches. And so with that, um, at, the, at that level, you kind of move around. And um, every time we would move to a new town, um, you know, I would watch my mom take over the girls' basketball program, typically not very successful programs, and just really turn those around and, and make them into something special. Um, so I'm... I'm very fortunate. I would say that so much of what I've been able to do here um, in Kansas City has been just taken from that blueprint that I was getting from my mom for all those years. 
So is that like your call a friend hotline that you use throughout the course of the year? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, every every other day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure. What a what a great resource. Now, the the one thing and just getting to know you a little that I do right now, you're obviously a young coach. You know, I, I was there as I've said on here a couple of times. I was 25 years old when I was a head coach and thought I knew everything and knew absolutely nothing. You know, and um, I'd be anxious to hear from you. Like, just what have you learned so far? Because you've got a short career that's that's going to continue to go and go and go. But, but what's what's been that greatest lesson up to this point or, or maybe a couple of things? I mean, I, I think being a head coach is the most humbling job on the planet, uh, to be honest with you. I, I've never really, I mean, I, I have a lot of confidence in myself, but I have never felt like I know everything or am done mm-hmm. learning. Um, still just learning every day, you know, how I can be better and how I can grow. Um, I think to... <laughs> This is kind of a broad answer, but um, I just think it's really hard to win. I think it's really hard to be successful. And, you know, whether you're a a business owner or a coach, I mean, whatever winning is to you, it's really hard to do. And it's hard to separate yourself. And um, so for us, you know, it's hard winning recruiting battles. It's hard winning basketball games. It's hard winning your days and, you know, having, having consistently good practices and winning your days. It's hard for our players to consistently win in the classroom. I mean, there's just so many things that we're all trying to be good at. And and so I would just say um, it's hard being successful. And now after we've had a, a really successful year, even in the short amount of time after our season has finished up, I'm finding it's really hard to win and be successful, but it's really, really hard to stay there and stay at the top and, and you know, consistently stay at the top. Yeah, great. I think that's that's something we've talked about with a couple of coaches already on here. Sustainability to me is just, it's it's remarkable. And you, you mentioned a word that I'm going to get, <clears throat> excuse me, to a second here uh, about growing. Uh, and, and one coach, I have to let you know, the other day said on here uh, that coaching is like flying a plane. There's a lot of turbulence and you just got to land it, right? I mean, that's kind of, <laughs> I've never heard that one, but that's pretty good. Um, so where else do you think you need to grow? You know, are there certain areas? And, and, and what I'd be interested in is how you're doing that personally. Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, for me, I, I think some of the strengths that I have are um, just relationship building. I think I'm a good communicator. I, I think that um, because of my age, I'm relatable for my mm. players. And so I feel very strong that our culture um, is where I want it to be. Um, it can always get better, but I do feel like that's a strength of mine is the ability to just build good, positive culture. Um, where I need to grow, uh, I would say, as I self-reflect, and I, and I feel this every, every day, every game, um, I just need to grow you know, I don't have the experience that a lot of coaches have. And there's really nothing I can do about that um, other than just try and learn as much as I can every day from other coaches and, you know, people around me. Um, I'm always hard on myself. I think I can still get a lot better with my X's and O's, uh, my game strategy. You know, the game is so fast. As an assistant, it's like, okay, you, you can sit back and you can think, uh, well, why don't we do this or why don't we do that? And then being in the head chair, it's like, whoa. I mean, it, it's so much faster. Um, I'm sure you felt that. But um, so I would say just just game management. I want to get a lot better at that. And unfortunately, that's hard to do without just getting right. that, you know, that game repetition. But um, just trying to spend a lot of time going to other coaches' practices and and not being afraid to not know all the answers and ask mm-hmm. questions. Um, so that's something that I'm really intentional about doing so that I can grow in that area. Yeah, that's good stuff. I think it's almost like playing checkers to playing chess, right? And that, that 18, that 18 inch move from that seat to the next seat's the biggest 18 inches that you'll, you'll jump sure. in that career. Um, so, I mean, do you have any struggles like with, with leadership in general? Um, or do you feel like, you know, one thing I'd be interested in though, it might be obvious even with that leadership, where does failure fit in all that, right? That's such a big thing that you know, being resilient and, and understanding that when you play sports and coach, um, does that kind of fit in, in, in what might be some of those things that you're facing from your leadership position, if you will? Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, going back to my original answer of how hard it is to be successful or, or to win, you know, 
we fail uh, unless you're, you know, the Coach K's, the the Bill Selfs, the Geno's, mm -hmm. the Kim Mulkey's. I mean, you're gonna fail more times than you succeed, right? So, I would say just having the resiliency to just bounce back and, and kind of that grit, you know, that just because you fail, you're not going to stay down. That is so crucial. Um, I feel like it's so crucial. In fact, I actually made growth mindset one of our core values uh, because, man, I mean, it, like you just, you're never going to be good enough. You know, you're constantly mm -hmm. going to be making mistakes. And even when you don't, maybe even if you win a game, you still have to have that growth mindset to, to learn and, and to get better from that experience. So growth mindset is something that we talk to our team about every single day. Um, I'm constantly trying to remind myself to, to just, you know, live that out as well. Yeah, and that's tough sometimes to get 18 to 22 year olds to, to understand or grasp that. So I, I, I definitely um, embrace that. So the wins keep coming here. You had 11 the first year, you had 16, you know, the second year, you had 21 last year. You talked about the success already, which means you'll have a minimum of 26 this year, right? I mean, so <laughs> I what, <wish> what, <clears throat> talk to us, and you talked a little bit about your mom there. Talk to us a little bit about building the program. Um, I'd hate to say that I don't know what this is like. I took over when I was coaching two poor position so you go through those growth pains but you obviously have to have a vision you have to have a blueprint that you, you you alluded to a little bit earlier can you give us a little bit of insight to that if you don't mind please yeah um i mean you know to be honest i'm i'm not really a big goal person so when i got the job i just told myself I've, i just have to make this better than how i found it and so that's what i really work to do every day um our team has uh a couple little mottos that we really try and live by. Um, the first thing is in, in our recruiting, when you're talking about vision, we really, really sold this vision of the ring team. Um, it has never been done in, in our program history to win a conference championship or to go to the NCAA tournament. So my staff and I came up with kind of this vision of, you know, come here and be a part of the ring team and, mm -hmm. and say that you're the first to help us win rings Love it. um and and that was hard because you know we don't have banners hanging up we we didn't have pictures to show it was you know we mocked up some some championship rings and sold that vision and um lucky for us it stuck and uh some really good players bought into that and and now you know i get to sit here before you and say that that we are the ring team um so i, I think vision casting is so important and um, being able to, you know, paint that picture to people who maybe don't understand it or maybe don't know what it takes. Um, but I do think that that's incredibly important that you can cast that vision so that on your daily walk, you know, you're, you're doing things that can help you achieve that. Um, the other thing that we talk about every day is, um, so I'm a big Tony Dungy fan and um, my, my faith is really important to me. And so anytime I can connect my faith with basketball, um, that's, that's really special for me. Um, so we, we have the motto, um, just being uncommon. And, uh, you know, if you want to, I, I, we constantly give our players stats like, okay, you know, there's 351 division teams and only 64 make the NCAA tournament. And, you know, like just breaking everything down to show them, so what if you say you want to be good? Or so so what if you say that you want to be a, a part of the ring team and win a ring? What are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. And then we help them understand that, you know, your priorities, your, your decisions are always revealing your priorities. So if you want to do uncommon things, then you have to make uncommon decisions on a daily basis. And so we're constantly, you know, just pounding that into their heads, you know, how, how can you be uncommon as a student? How can you be uncommon as a teammate or as a player? What kind of commitment are you going to make? Um, and, and just that one word uncommon is just, it's our, it's our anchor. You know, we can always come back to that with everything. So that's been something that's been really instrumental for us. Yeah. I love it. I, I can, um, I, I totally respect that approach and, uh, kind of the same on my end. I've read that devotional. It's really, really good. And staying grounded in that has, has been huge in my life, as you just mentioned in yours. And, and I think, um, you know, what, what you talked about, <clears throat> excuse me, with, with coming up with that vision, that's so important and to get people to buy into that. So 
let, let's let's backtrack even a little bit further. You, you talked about now even being in this situation, and I mentioned the word sustainability to you. So so that's the hurdle where you're at now, right? You're not going to sell that vision. I mean, you can sell maybe a second ring, but you've got that first one that's over and done with. So how do you avoid against complacency? What are some things that you're doing to make sure that you know you guys can stay up here and, and, and not go down a notch? Yeah, I think I think a lot of it is just believing so much in what got you there and not straying away from that. Um, and, and as coaches, we do that all the time, right? I mean, it's like something doesn't work and we're like, ah, you know, we'll, we'll run this different offense or oh, she's not producing, so we got to go this way. Um, and I think it's just important to just, just hunker down, you know, bear down and just trust what you're doing. Um, and, and I constantly have to remind myself of that all the time, you know, like we didn't just get here by accident. We, we did a lot of specific things that, that helped get us here. And so I don't know what this coming year is going to be like, but I know what works and I just have to, you know, trust that and, and trust myself. Um, but it is very hard and um, I'm actually so thankful for this Michael Jordan documentary that's out right now because that's what the whole thing is about. Um, and so we've been watching that as a team and uh, talking about it, you know, talking about, okay, you know, so, so they won one and then, and then they wanted two and then they were on the same playing field. Other teams had won two before, but nobody had won three in a row. And so, just constantly, I think it's very important to give players specific examples of who has done it and what did they do to, to, to achieve that. You know, what did that take? Um, I'm a, you know, of course, everyone in Kansas City, big Kansas City Chiefs fans. Yeah. Um, and so we got to kind of, and I know this is like such a fan thing to say, but <laughs> But as fans, you know, we all feel like we're on this journey with our teams. And so to track what the Chiefs did this year and, and mm -hmm. watching Patrick Mahomes and his leadership, um, I'm really intentional about giving that information to our players. You know, like, look at what he, look at what he said in this huddle. Or, you know, look, look at what Andy Reid has done. And, and so just studying, I think it's, it's just so important. Like you have to study the people who have gone before you and already done what you're trying to do and, and learn from them. Yeah, amen to that. That's, that's really good. Uh, I got to know, though, like just to get sidetracked for a second. So who, who's the best player of all time? Is it Jordan, LeBron? Do you, who is it for you? <laughs> I mean, I'm Jordan. <clears throat> all the Are you? I'm just old school. Um, of course, you know, like that's what my mom taught me growing up um i did live in that kobe era though for okay me. yeah yeah right so, so i mean mj is always going to be mj but kobe is a close second and i respect lebron but i wouldn't say he's with them yeah yeah that, <laughs> if, if you're a michael kobe guy then lebron's a little separate but yeah sure. well i can kind of pick up already uh jc on your on your culture um it's just something that i, I guess probably as coaches we pay a lot more attention to uh, and you mentioned some core values earlier. I'm sure that goes in there. Um, but, but speak to that a little bit more, if you don't mind. Like, give us a, a, you know, not necessarily maybe a deep dive all the way in, but it's obviously something that is sticking and working for you that's enabling you guys just to keep going. It's not, you know, and I know the path can be here and so on and so forth, but what, what's this culture all about down there? Yeah, well, I think <clears throat> everyone wants to talk about culture, um, but I don't think that, let me put it this way. I feel like it's very easy to talk about it, but not live that out. And I think you have to really fight to do that because it can get really easily lost in everything else that we do, you know, as coaches or, or for our players. And so the first thing I think is important about culture is just being consistent and uh, not, you know, not just talking about one thing or maybe showing a, a PowerPoint or something like that and then never talking about it again. I think you have to be really consistent with what you're what you're preaching to whoever you know you're leading. And so for us, um, I had mentioned being uncommon. That's kind of our overarching theme. Um, but the other core values that we have outside of growth mindset, uh, we talk about passion. That's a non-negotiable for me. You know, just not being lukewarm, uh, just going all in with everything that that you're doing. Um, we talk about toughness, and toughness for us is not just physical toughness, it's also mental and emotional toughness. 
Um, we talk about family, of course, just probably like everybody else does. Um, and then uh, we also talk about, um, this is a new one that I've added um, just within the last couple years. And, and I think this has been maybe something that's put us over the top. And I listened to a, a podcast um, with uh, an interview with Steve Kerr, and he was really big on this with the Warriors. But um, our, our new core value that we've added is joy. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, right. uh, just, just finding the joy in what we do and, and who we get to do it with. And I think that's so crucial because, as you know, I mean, our seasons are so long. Yeah. It's such a grind. And if you lose sight of why you do things or, or you lose that perspective, then – I mean, why, why do it? You know, it's not any fun. Um, but I think if we're just constantly seeking out those things, um, that, that we get joy out of and just mm -hmm. kind of having that attitude of gratitude, you know, all the time, just, just finding joy and even the hardest things that we do, um, that's really special. And so, so that's, that's a lot of, um, you know, we, we play music at practice. I mean, we try and do a lot of things that really kind of bring that that energy. Um, but for me, that that's been something that's really helped me stay rooted. Yeah, that's cool. I, I remember that same podcast. Um, that's something with our three boys talking. We talk about joy. You know, that to us, it's 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 Jesus, others, yourself. A good acronym there that you know you can kind of use with them too and keep them grounded and and at the forefront. Um, talk to us a little bit about your players, maybe just starting with the recruiting process. Is, is there certain things, I mean, I'm sure your core values fit into this, right? But like, is there certain things other than those that you're looking for specifically when you and your staff go out and your recruits? This would be applicable maybe to anybody even trying. I know the whole process is different and takes a lot longer, but if I'm interviewing somebody tomorrow, you know, am I to associate that with my culture? Are there certain other things? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, recruiting is hard. I, I think this is the hardest part of what we do. And, and I say that because you just never really know someone's character until you're in the trenches with them. Uh, for us in basketball, I think it's really important that you can read between the lines because all, all of our, all the, all the recruits that we have, I mean, they're, they're good people, you know, but they're all kind of trained to say the same things. They're, tra they're trained to say the right things. Their coaches typically are not really going to say anything negative. Um, you talk to a parent and, you know, because they, they love their kids, they're going to say, you know, that they're the hardest working, you know, but best people out there. And, and so um, I think it's just important that you kind of read between the lines. And I think it's important for me. Um, I really, this is going to sound kind of weird, but um, I, I like to see players when they have a bad game. I like to see players when, you know, they're, they're faced with adversity, maybe going through foul trouble or just not having a good game. Um, I, I love watching their character in those times and um, evaluating, you know, it, how tough are they really? How are, are they really mentally tough? Are they really emotionally tough? Um, and of course, always physical toughness. But um, so, so that's something we really talk about as a staff and try and, you know, figure out. Um, but I just feel like if, if a kid has a high motor, if a kid um, is coachable and a hard worker and a great teammate, then we can kind of figure out the rest. Um, and, and I say that, of course, you know, that of course they have to be able to, you know, make a basket and, you know, dribble with both hands. I, I'm not saying that we totally throw out the basketball part, but, but I just think that character piece is so important because – we live in a world of, of self-promotion and um, it's, it's just really easy to be selfish, you know, and yeah. you can't be in basketball. It's, it's a team sport. And so just trying to find those players who want to win above all, and they can set their own personal pride and egos aside in order to accomplish that. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's, I've, I've spoken to the Ohio State men's assistant coach, one of the Virginia assistant men's the other day. And, Two of the things that you said was, you know, one of the things I'll state is, you know, what what have they had to deal with up to this point, you know, and how they've reacted to that. And I know the other one, Tony Bennett, is all about, can I lose with this guy, you know, because you're going to be in that long season. Uh, and there's just so many different things. I, I remember when I got him there before, Coach, that I, I would even film just the bench. I remember the first time I did that and showed that film, like, 
the day later when they didn't know. I could never use that again, but just things like that. So I love what you're saying there. I, I think that's awesome. Uh, and let's tie in a little bit to your staff. Once again, business leadership teams or, or just staffs in sports in general. You know, what are you looking for there? I know at least for me, you know, like loyalty and, and just support and things like that, integrity. Those are always really big things to me. Are there certain things when you're assembling your staff um, that, that, that mean a lot to you? I mean, you just hit the nail on the head. I, I would say I value the same things. Um, it, you know, integrity is everything. And uh, there's unfortunately a lot of coaches out there who are willing to set that aside mm. in order to, you know, maybe land a recruit or, or win or whatever that may be. And um, that's, that's one of the biggest things I learned as a head coach is everything comes back on you, you know, everything, whether you know what's going on or not, or whether you told them to do that or not, you're ultimately the one who falls on the sword. And so integrity, I just, I can't say enough about that because to me, just having the peace of mind and, and going to bed at night, knowing that I don't have to worry about other things that, that could be going on to jeopardize, you know, my career or my reputation, especially being so young, um, I, I just think that's huge. Um, loyalty is, is super important. You mentioned that. Um, I, I also would say, though, I don't, I don't necessarily view loyalty as someone who just wants to tell me everything that I want to hear. Um, I, I want people with, with um, you know, just different brains around me. Mm -hmm. Like, I, yeah. I think that's really important. Um, and so I always really try and give my assistants a voice and, and ask for their opinions because um, I know I don't have all the answers and I might be making that final call at the end of the day, but I certainly want other people's input. Um, and uh, I just, I, I want hard workers. I want people who love to learn and um, who are going to go out there and grind and uh, not complain about that and do whatever they can to, you know, help us win and be successful. Right. Yeah, that's great. And, and I wonder, just talking to you here a little bit, it seems to me like you really come from that servant leadership mindset, you know, and you talked about relationships and communicating, connecting. I think those fall underneath that umbrella. It's hard to get caught up, if you will, in that because we become so results driven. Is that something that's a focal point for you personally? Absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I mentioned my faith earlier and um, just what a better that there's never been a better servant leader out there than Jesus and the example that he gave us. So um, I am far from that, but that's what I strive to be and, and um, really try and, um, you know, him and, and Martin Luther King and um, just people like that who we can study and see, you know, I mean, the most talked about leaders in the history of our world, you know, mm -hmm. if, if you really look that's they were servant leaders and so I 100% believe in that and um, I've been fortunate to play for coaches like that I've been fortunate to work for coaches like that and um, I know that's maybe not for everyone but that's how I want to do things yeah right and I, and I can tell here and talking to you too that you, you enjoy growing you enjoy getting better so you mentioned a couple people and studying them you threw in a podcast I always like to ask all, all the people that come on here, what, what are some things that you're doing, you know, individually to grow? Is that kind of what it is? You're reading, you're listening to podcasts, you're going to practices, all that, all that stuff. Anything else? I just think it's so important to try and, and have people in your circle that you trust to tell you truth. And um, maybe sometimes just a vent to uh, being a head coach, I mean, especially at my age, I would say that's something I've struggled with, uh, to be very honest, is just feeling, you know, it's, it's kind of lonely sometimes. You just feel like there's not a lot of people out there who understand what you're going through. And so for me personally, outside of reading and, and listening to podcasts and, um, you know, going to practices, just just having that inner circle that you can call someone and you can vent to them and you know they're not going to judge you, but they're also going to tell you, you know, maybe what you need to hear sometimes. Um, fortunately, I have that with my mom, um, yeah. but also just other college coaches. I just, I think that's so important because otherwise you kind of, you start to go crazy, you know? Yeah, I've told people before, one of the worst feelings ever is when you're on like that three, four game winning or losing streak, excuse me, and you're like the only one in the gym and you're on an island, you know, your assistants are over there, you're 
your kids are over there. It's, it's, a, it's a terrible feeling. But then when you get it on the other side and you get it clicking kind of like you did this year at the end of the year, or, you know, it's, it's probably one of the best feelings in the world, you know? For sure. Yeah. So uh, as we wrap up here, we kind of like to do somewhat of a rapid fire. If it takes a little longer, don't worry about it. But I like to call those three pointers just so, and I know you can shoot the three, so you'll, you'll knock these out of the park <laughs> here, all right? But uh, the, uh, the first one I, I would ask you is if, if, if people are listening to this and they can grab a hold of one thing and, and take away from here, well, what do you want them to take out of this talk? Oh, man, that's tough. Um, there's so much. I, this, this sounds so corny, but I just find so much relief in the fact that all I have to do is just be my absolute best every day. Just give my best and not, not let people outwork me. And I might not know everything, but if I just show up and give my best, then I know over time good things are going to happen. Um, and I say that gives me peace because there are times when I go into big games when I'm just like so in my head, you know, and, and you get nervous and you start thinking of all the things that could happen. And, and then I just remind myself, all I have to do is be my best. Mm -hmm. And that's good enough. Um, that's what got me here. So I would just say, uh, like just to trust yourself if you're working hard if you're working your absolute hardest and giving your best then that's really all that you can do the rest of, is outside of your control anyway yeah for sure and and i love the authenticity that you have even the vulnerability with us here today with some of your answers i think that probably helps you in that servant leadership role so the next thing is uh and this they only get harder here as we go no but uh if you could step into my shoes and reverse this, what would have you asked yourself today that I did not ask you? Oh man, um, I don't know, this has been really fun for me. You're really yeah. good at the job. So, um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, we've talked about a lot of the things that I think are most important. Um, I mean, I, I do think maybe if you were to ask me kind of, um, like I, I, this is one of the things I've, I've learned in studying other coaches is the really good ones are all kind of a little crazy. Okay. Uh, and I, and I just think that um, it's okay to be a little crazy with some things, you know, and, and just be very, very passionate and maybe psycho about, yeah. you know, whatever is important to you. And um, so for me, again, like going back to what I always tell my players about your decisions, reveal your priorities. Um, I have not um, had any caffeine to drink. I don't drink pop. I haven't drank a pop since I was in, I think, like the fourth grade. Because um, I've just always been about being my best, you know, whatever I can do to stay healthy. And, and now even to this day, it's really important for me to stay fit and healthy um, so that I can be at my best for my players. And I think as coaches, we all kind of, we don't take very good care of ourselves sometimes uh, because it's hard to, to sleep at night and mm. eat the way that we should and make time for ourselves. And so I would just say that's one of those things that we personally have to probably be better at for ourselves so that we can better serve everyone around us. Yeah, for sure. That's great. Uh, last one is not that difficult. I mean, yeah. obviously it could be catered to this time or just anything in general. Uh, I call this, I call this good stuff. Um, what, what's kind of some good stuff that, you know, once again, it's maybe fitting for this time or in general that you can just kind of leave us with. Um, are you talking about more in, in relation to everything with the COVID stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know the right or wrong thing. Um, I think for me, I'm trying to just take a step back and let myself be okay with not doing anything. Mm. Uh, I've spent more time with my family than I probably have since I was in high school. Um, you know, just spending a lot of time with my husband, um, just taking personal time for myself. And um, cause at the beginning I was doing about a thousand zoom calls a day and a hundred phone calls. And um, I found myself being even more tired than if we weren't in this situation. And so I would just say, I think it's okay, you know, and maybe that's what we're supposed to be doing right now is just taking a step back and relaxing and, and breathing and um, gaining perspective on the things that really should have been most important to us all along, which is family, I think, right. and just being present with those around you. Yeah, that's great. Great advice. Um, well, let, let's wrap up here with, with just letting our listeners, where, where can they connect with you? I know you're on Twitter, uh, anywhere else, or just maybe some information about the team. What, what would you like them to know? 
Yeah, sure. Um, so you can follow me on Twitter. My name is at Coach JC, and um, that's J A C I E because a lot of people don't don't know how to spell my name. They <laughs> spell it wrong every time I go to Starbucks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I mean, you know, you can of course check out um, anything about our team at, at our website, um, kcruise.com. Um, but uh, I think uh, I'm pretty much an open book on Twitter, so that's really my go-to. All right, great. Well, hey, I, I just want to thank you so much for, for making the time today and, and just sitting down and talking with us about these topics. I'm sure it'll, it'll benefit other people. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for giving my, my fix to get to talk a little bit of basketball. It's been yeah, fun. Yeah, anytime. Hey, I just want to thank everybody else again for listening. Uh, and as always, I, I think there's a lot of good stuff in here. You know, I think it's important that you listen to it and pick and choose and, and where you can find that to be applicable in your life. It's one thing to have these good intentions, and it's another thing to act on it. So I encourage you to act on that uh, as much as you can. But until next time, good stuff.